Hey guys and welcome back and this is my hardware review of the QNAP TVS 872N. Right, so for anyone that's watched my unboxing video on the other YouTube channel, you'll know that this device arrives with a bunch of accessories. I'm not going to talk about them too much here, but I do advise you check out that unboxing to see exactly what you get for your money. You get this NAS, you get some LAN cables, you get the screws, you get the heat sinks and stuff like that for the inside. You get a bunch of stuff included. But this video, I want to focus just on this device. I want to talk about why this device is so important. Now, I know that, as mentioned in the other video, and I'll stop alluding to that one, you could just watch it, um, 5 GBE is not for everyone. 5 gigabit Ethernet is five times that um, of existing Ethernet speed in the home or general office environment. Yes, it's more affordable than the likes of 10 GBE, and a number of you out there will see that as a good thing. But I do know that 10 GBE is appealing enough in some regions in the world and is affordable enough that a number of you do not see the point of 5GBE. I'm gonna try and change your mind today. Maybe I'll succeed, maybe I'll fail. But what I want to talk about is why this NAS is important for several reasons that I'm gonna go on. But first and foremost, I wanna talk about its power. That's the first main reason why the 872N is a big deal. It arrives with a quad-core Intel CPU it's the 8th uh, generation, 8100, and that is an i3 quad core, 3.1 gigahertz per core. It's AES-NI encryption, of course, and it's even graphically embedded to quite an interesting degree. It also arrived with 8 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded to 32 gig, and as if performance wasn't already blistering enough, it arrived with an NVMe SSD cache bay, two slots inside that allow you to install that super fast NVMe SSD cache to get enhanced read and write speeds alongside your existing hard drive array. Now, though that is the NVMe base also can be used for raw storage. So you've got two NVMe's that have got between 1800 and over 3000 megabytes per second read and write speeds, depending, I know they do differ drive to drive, let's just focus on read for now. But if we say at least 2000 and some odd as good average case, you have got some great storage inside that you can take advantage of. Now, although I mentioned that this has got that five times usual internet, ethernet speed, so rather than 100 or so megabytes per second, you can get in excess of five on top of that, you've got PCIe upgrade slots that allow you to upgrade to 10 GBE, 25 GBE, and 40 GBE at your expense and more gradually than being forced to buy these things at the beginning. And that's the second reason that this device is so important because 5 GBE is only the start of it. It's giving you 5 GBE at a price point where all of the hardware spec I've mentioned and the others that I'm going to talk about in a bit with regards to the ports present you with a powerful business class 8 bay NAS at a price threshold that is comparable to any of its predecessors of 8 bay NASs, even all these years on. And on top of that, it arrives with 5 GB effectively included in the price for free, which is a big deal. Because if you're buying a NAS now, maybe you're not using 10 GBE right now. Maybe you're not even going to use 5 GBE right now. But this NAS gives you the ability to add that functionality later. It gives you the ability to upgrade and kind of have a much, much higher glass ceiling when buying this a few years later, rather than locking you in um, at 1 GBE without the ability to upgrade later, even gradually from 1 to 5 to 10. Or worse, the alternative is if you go for the XT, which forces you to pay for 10 GBE and Thunderbolt 3 connectivity that not only do you not want to use right now, but you may not use in the future, which means that you're gonna be overspending and your budget will go into that hardware when where you really want that money is here in the storage or the software. The next point about this device is the fact that although the insides are pretty fast, the outsides are pretty damn fast too. Um, if we turn to the rear of it, we can have a look at the ports and connections. Now I'm gonna try and bring this up to camera. And we're focusing mainly on those ports there on the side. Now, at the top, we've got those PCIe slots that we've already mentioned will allow you to add further connected bays. And again, 10 GBE, 25 GBE, and 40 GBE cards are all available from QNAP, and all of them are supported on this device, as my understanding. Double check the compatibility though, because you never know. On top of that, we have got an HDMI port there, just underneath those PCIe slots, that's HDMI 2.0A, which means 4K 
60 frames per second output. And thanks to QNAP's own HD station dedicated um, HDMI output user interface, you have got everything supported from Plex to virtual machines to surveillance with QVR Pro and the eight licenses this includes and a bunch of other stuff too. And again, if you're going to be looking at dense, dense, dense 4K 60 frames per second media, this is definitely the one for you, particularly guys that are looking for a new Plex media server with a bit of future proofing, you're looking at it. That i3 can handle a hell of a lot, both locally over HDMI and with transcoding in and out of Plex. And of course, we will do a Plex test on this beast too. Now, underneath that, we have got that Ethernet port there, that 5GB port there. And that is where the magic happens. That is where we have got 5 gigabit Ethernet. And thanks to adapters, like the brand new USB to 5 GBE adapter that QNAP released, that's supported by Mac and Windows, you can create a direct line of access to a direct connection to your NAS storage over 5 GBE and get five times traditional speeds. That's going to be good for editing, it's going to be good for gaming, and good for backups too. Talking of backups, we have got both on the front and on the rear here, USB 3.1 Gen 2. That's 10 gigabits per second connectivity, which means localized backups over USB will be so, so much faster in both directions. But these USB ports can also be used for supported peripherals and other QNAP add-ons. So do check those out because again, with a QNAP, you are getting something that is great for the internet, great for the network and great for local. There's two more 1 GBE ports as well, which once you link aggregate, you are going to get um, 2 GBE from these ports if you choose to lag them. And of course, how they interact with the other ports is something I don't know, but I'm sure the network switch, uh, network and virtual sit switch program for QTS will give you a lot out of that too. At the bottom, we've got audio ports and a speaker. We're not going to focus too much on those, but... I'm going to say that right now, in terms of business class 8 base, this is pretty damn good. Which leads us on to the other reason why this is a good NAS. Thanks to its hybrid um, nature of that software being far more geared towards business in terms of that duplication software, QDDupe, the virtualization platform, virtualization station supporting so many VMs in a far more customizable fashion and QVR Pro surveillance platform with eight camera licenses included in this as well as the ability to use USB cameras locally, you have got loads of business solutions built into this along with a whole host of file and CR, I'm sorry, CMS systems available to you. If you're a home user, if you're someone that's going to be buying this as a Plex media server, because right now this is one of the best out there in terms of price versus output, then it's on top of that you've got a bunch of home and more family orientated apps open to you and all of that with a device that is comparable in price for an 8-bay as a number of other um, Intel powered 8-bay solutions from QNAP. I would say that this rivals even that 7.3 series with its Radeon, base C um, Radeon powered AMD CPUs and this even arrives at a lower price than those and still gives you a hell of a lot more in terms of expandability, port and interaction with it, which leads me to the fourth most important point about why this is such an important NAS. Right now, we're going into that part of the year when the NASs that are available for a number of people to buy are actually, there aren't as many as one would expect right now. I don't know if anyone follows the release schedule of NASs. Obviously, I talk about NAS a lot, so I keep an eye on these things. And right now, we're entering into a part of the year when generally the new NASs start to arrive. And not just simple NASs, but quite complex ones too. And I know for a fact that there's a number of you that was following my coverage of other brands in the last few months, and you've been holding on to your spending. You're waiting for what's new. Because everything that's currently out there is maybe a year and a half, two years old, and you're thinking, do I buy that or am I just going to hold on and see what new is happening? And I can tell you right now that QNAP are investing in this with 5GBE, releasing solutions that are comparable at 1GBE prices with 5GBE included. Now, what else they're going to put out before the end of the year? Who knows? But right now, in terms of an 8-bay, this is as good as it gets right now. Yes, it doesn't have 10 GB or Thunderbolt, but if you want that solution, it's been around for a while. But I defy you to find a better 8-bay with these specifications available right now with this spec at this price. If you want to know the price, obviously, day to day, I'm not going to put it here on the screen because all too often these things change, but I do recommend you click below to the NAS Compare article and span.com to find out more information about availability 
and prices for this device. It is available now. They do have them and they are selling remarkably well for a device that's only just landed. Um, me personally, I'm looking forward to seeing what this device can do. I'm, tr I'm hoping to do some stuff with some Seagate drives that I've got here where I'm going to be testing things from Steam game libraries to video editing and the standard speed test I mentioned in the other video. I've alluded to it three times now. Do bear in mind there's also going to be more information from QNAP about some stuff that's happening around the world uh, in their new Tech Day launch series that I'm going to talk about soon. And I think we're going to be seeing a lot more from QTS in a more formal way very, very, very soon. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. We'll be doing a software overview and Plex on this device, and I can't wait to show you that. But otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to click like if you enjoyed this and click subscribe, and I'll see you next time.